Welcome to Strings of Life, a ministry of the Berean SBA Church in South Bend, Indiana. Tonight we'll continue the message by Dr. Knight, entitled, Unlocking the Power of the Word. Stay tuned at the end of our program for more information about the Berean SBA Church and how you can help spread the gospel in the Michiana area. 1 John 5. 1 John 5, 14. This is near the end of the Bible, right a few books before Revelation. 1 John 5, 14. I'll do 5, 14, and 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. If we ask anything according to his will, the, the, the next one, we must want God's will to be done in our prayers. Okay, okay. Here you Christians go. This is where you Christians cop out. You know, you Christians are something else. You Christians say that the God will answer a good man's prayer, a good woman's prayer every time, and when he doesn't answer your prayer, you know, you say, oh, it wasn't the will of God. That's a cop-out you Christians have. Well, you know one thing? In my life, I have found that I want to put everything in God's hand because he knows the beginning from the end. I've told this story before. When I was four years old, I made a magnificent discovery. I discovered, well, I was four years old, and I discovered that a bobby pin, you know the bobby pin that the women put in their hair? A bobby pin fits perfectly in a socket. Wait a second, I'm four years old, the bobby pin, you know what it looks like, it fits perfectly in the socket. I was so proud of myself. I've made this fantastic discovery. Surely the bobby pin goes in the socket. And I, and I went to the socket, you know, under the table, and I was getting ready to put the bobby pin in, and my father saw me, and he said, son, do not do that. I said, what? I'm a free moral agent. <laughs> you know, I can do whatever I want to do. I have free will and free choice. He says, no, don't put the... Let me give you a, a commandment. And you see, I, I, I'm so sorry they named that those, the Ten Commandments. They should have named them the Ten Principles of Life, as opposed to the Ten Commandments. Okay, but my father gave me a, a principle or a commandment. He said, I'm giving you a commandment or a principle of life. Never stick a bobby pin in the socket. <laughs> I couldn't understand it. I said, how are you going to tell me not to? And I tried one time, and he had to, he had to slap my hand one time. And, no, no. You see, my father knew something that I didn't know. He knew that behind that plate on the wall, that socket was hooked up to this big cable. And this cable went down in the ground and ran through the city streets and, and ran to the electric company and hooked up to this big giant generator that put out billions of watts of electricity. And if I had stuck that bobby pin in the socket, death, disease, and destruction would follow. <laughs> I didn't understand it, but my father knew. So, so, so yes, that's what I wanted to do, but uh, when, when we get to heaven, we're going to look back over our lives, and we're going to see some of our greatest blessings were prayer requests that we made that God never answered. I was, I was in, in uh, and my wife has heard this story before, I was in high school. And remember when you were in high school, you used to go with folks, you used to go steady with folks? Well, there was this young lady that I wanted to go steady with in high school. I'll never forget her, boy, Deborah Williams. And, and, and I, wa I, I wanted to go steady with her. So I said, okay, I, I was so scared to ask her to go steady with me. But I, I, I went home and I said, I'm going to ask her to go steady with me tomorrow. And I prayed. I said, Lord, please let her go steady with me tomorrow. 
And I got dressed up, you know, I put on my black international sweater and silk and short skin pants, Playboy shoes. I, I was looking good, went to school, and I asked her to go with me. And the Lord answered my prayers. She went steady with me. That girl was my worst nightmare. <laughs> She drove me every which way but loose. She was crazy. I should have said, let her go with me, Lord, but thy will be done. <laughs> I bought, uh, I saw this, this red Fiat Spider. Red Fiat Spider with a convertible Bose system in it, graphic equalizer in there. And I said, Lord, please help me to get this red Fiat Spider. Y'all, listen, don't ever buy a Fiat Spider. The Lord answered my prayer. I was able to buy it. That thing left me on the freeway six times. Six times I got stuck on the freeway with that red Fiat Spider. <laughs> I should have bought a little Volkswagen or something, you know. But I should, I should say, Lord, thy will be done. And that's, that's, that, that's the thing of it. You see, we can only see what's in front of us. But the Lord sees around corners. He's omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. He sees the beginning from the end. And he loves us. And he doesn't want anything to hurt us. So when we pray, we say, uh, Lord, this is what I want, but thy will be done. We must listen to God and obey God if we want our prayers to be answered. Oh, I'm going to blow somebody's mind now. Proverbs 28. Now, this is not what I'm saying. Everything has been in the word of God. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 28, verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Wait a second. I was in the drug, uh, drug rehab homes in Oakland, California. I'm from California. I passed it in San Francisco, Oakland, Sacramento. And i never forget in a rehab situation, uh, I was telling uh, someone, you cannot pray to God to take crack out your life. God ain't going to answer that prayer. You can't say, Lord, please take the crack out of my life over here but I'm going to keep on chasing women and whoremongering over here. Lord, please take the alcohol out of my life over here, but I'm going to keep on lying and stealing over here. Lord, the drugs and alcohol over here is messing up my sinful life over here, so Lord, take the drugs and alcohol out of my life over here so I can continue living my sinful life over here. It's not going to work. You have to do like I did in 1986. I said, Lord, please take my life, my whole life, and do with it whatever you want to do. You see, because stopping using drugs is no problem. Not, getting off of drugs and alcohol and cigarettes, no problem. I, you know, I, you can, I, I, it's no problem because I stopped 50 times. <laughs> So stopping is no problem. It's staying stopped. <laughs> it's staying stopped. Who knows what I'm talking about is true. Stopping is not a problem. 50 times I stop. But, 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 but it's only a God that can help you with this. And that day, I said, Lord, take my life, my whole life, after stopping 75, 80 times. I said, take my life, my whole life, and do with it whatever you want to do with it. And, I, and, and at that time, I said, Lord, please don't even give me the power to overcome because if you give me the power, I'm going to mess the power up just like I mess up everything else. You have to be the power in my life. You do it, Lord. And in the process of taking uh, my entire life, he took that vida loca, that crazy life out of me. He also took the cussing out of my life. He also took the, uh, made me faithful to one woman. <laughs> He also took the lying and the stealing out of my life. You cannot, but, wait, you know what? 
I see couples. They come to me for marriage counseling. I've been, I've been a, a marriage counselor for 20 years and since I left the seminary. And I see a couples come to me and they say, well, pastor, I'm having a, a, we're having a problem over here in our marriage, but, but we're still going to, you know, we're still going to drink wine and, and do what we want to do over here. Lord, we're having a problem over here, but we're still going to, you know, bow down to graven images over here. Lord, this area in my marriage is, is messing up what we want to do, so help fix this one area over here so we could do what we want to do. It doesn't work that way. It's all a nothing at all. All a nothing at all. So we must obey God. When we find the truth, we must obey God. And if we don't, what does Proverbs 28 say? Even our prayers shall be an abomination. Next. We must praise God and be thankful for God's goodness to us. Wow, Philippians. Philippians. We have to throw some prayer in there. Uh, Philippians, the fourth chapter. Let me start at verse 5. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And when you do that, the peace of God that passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And you know, as a parent, my wife and I as parents, we don't want anything from our kids. You know that? We don't, they don't have to give us any presents. They don't have to send us any money. You know what? You know what we love when they do? When they call us up and say, thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Mama. You know, thank you for setting us on that road. That's all we want. Just a little thank you in our day. Who knows what I'm talking about? The Lord don't need anything from us. But before you ask for what it is that you need, just say thank you, Lord. Thank you for always being right on time. Thank you for all the blessings you showered me with throughout the years. Thank you for what you're doing for me right now. But not only that, thank him for blessings that are on the way. Friends that you don't even know you get ready to meet. I, the, Lifting you up that you don't even know you're getting ready to fall. Jobs on the way that you don't even know you need a job. <laughs> Thank him for in advance. And the Bible says that that is the path to peace. Well, be thankful for God's goodness. Just say thank you every now and then. You know what I thought God wants? Just say thank you. Well, I hope somebody's praying for this last area. I'm going to pray right now just for this last area because this could be the most significant aspect of these 10 principles for prayer. We must ask God to forgive us of our sins. Now, this is a threefold process. The first is confession. We must confess our sins. Let's go back to 1 John. Let's go back to 1 John 1, verses 8 and 10. 1 John 1, verses 8 and 10. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We must foot. It's a kind of catharsis. It's a kind of cleansing uh, when we say, Lord, uh, please don't say, Lord, if I have sinned. I want to mean if. You know you sinned. <laughs> so just, just confess, Lord, I've messed up. And he is faithful and just. That gets me. He is faithful and just to us. So we have to confess our faults and sins. And sometimes we sin so much we don't even remember. So after you finish, just make a blanket confession 
I, Lord, and anything else I've done, please forgive me of my sin. You know? That's a little bit too early. The, 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 the next point is repentance. We have to repent of our sin. Godly sorrow worketh repentance. 2 Corinthians uh, uh, 7, 10. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yeah, yeah. And repentance means feeling sorry for sin. Amen. And the only way I could explain this is, how many here remember uh, when your first love broke your heart? Anybody have a love that broke your heart? Come on, raise your hand. I see. Remember when your love broke your heart? You know that pain that you felt inside? I remember I, I, love broke my heart one time and shot it, shot it, stomped on my heart, you know, stabbed it three or four times. It, you know what I mean with that pain. Uh, I remember one time after giving my life to Christ, I, for one instant, I turned back to that Vita Loca. Nobody would have known about it. And when I was by myself. Nobody would have known about it. But, but when I came back to my mind, I said, oh, I let God down. I let my family down. I let myself down. And I wept bitterly by myself, in my apartment, by myself, and that same pain, when that love broke my heart, is when I felt that's repentance. For, not repentance because I got busted. Yeah, you know, I'm not talking about if you get caught, you're sorry because you got caught. Sorry for the sin. That's repentance. And then the last one uh, is a forsaking of that sin. Yeah. Proverbs 28. Let's go back to Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28, uh, 13 and 14. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Happy is the man that fareth always, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. Not only do you have to confess your sin, not only do you have to feel that heart felt repentant, but you have to turn away from that sin. You, you, you got to do everything. To, I, when I gave my life to Christ, I went home and rearranged my apartment. I threw out all the things that reminded me of that ashtrays, anything that reminded me about that old life. I had to give up some good friends. Because good friends, because their lifestyle was not congruent with my lifestyle. I had to give up some relatives for a while, you know. I remember I had to drive home from work a different way. Because if I drove home from work and passed that same liquor store, I would have been in trouble. So I had to drive a different way home. You have to make a conscientious effort to turn away from the sin. You can't go to those same places you went to and say, I'm going to be strong. You got to turn away from, that means forsaking the sin. And sometimes you just got to pray to the Lord. Lord, you got to help me. You got to help me. And I found the key. You pray craving for craving. When you're talking about mind-altering substances. Craving for craving. I have smoked cigarettes for 15 years. And, 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 and anyone who smokes cigarettes, you know there's a hunger in your chest. You know, you're hungry for the nicotine. And, and sometimes that stuff would get so bad, but I found a key that when I got that craving, I would just pray, Lord, you gotta help me. i never forget one time I was in my apartment by myself and, 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 and the cravings were on me. The cravings were on me. And, and I said, Lord, you got to help me because I'm afraid that if, if I leave this apartment, I'm going to be in trouble. 
and the cravings were on me. And I gave up everything all at one time. <laughs> and, 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 and as I was leaving the house to go get in trouble, <laughs> there was a Bible. I just opened up the Bible, you know. I just opened up the Bible. I just said, Lord, you got to talk to me. Remember, I, I had just prayed, Lord, I'm afraid if I leave here, I'm going to be lost forever. And at that time, I didn't know what I was doing. So I just opened up the Bible and took my finger and pointed to a text. And it read, I don't even need the glasses, but uh, uh, Isaiah 41, verse 10. It said, fear thou not, for I am with thee. I started looking around. <laughs> Because I knew I was in the apartment by myself. <laughs> I thought the apartment was bugged or something, you know. Because I had just prayed, I'm afraid. And it said, fear thou not, for I am with thee. It said, be not dismayed. Don't upset yourself. Why? Because I am thy God. It, it said, I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And folks, I didn't hear any voices. I didn't, you know, but I tell you, I got a little, I didn't go out that day. And every time I got a craving, I would pray. And the Lord would sustain me. Because it wasn't me doing it, it was him. So, so, so you must confess your sin. Repent and forsake. But the last one, number 10. We must forgive others as we would expect God to forgive us. Amen. Now I need a little soft music here. Because this is heavy. This is heavy. I need to come down here to y'all. Uh, Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus gives us his model of prayer. The Lord's Prayer as it's come to be known. And he never told us to I memorize this and, and recite it anytime we want to talk to him. But these are all the elements of prayer in there that we should put in our prayer. And he only expounds on one area of this model prayer that he gave us. Look at the, uh, the sixth chapter of Matthew. After he gives us this Lord's Prayer, you guys know the Lord's Prayer, right? Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. After he gives us this entire model of prayer, there's only one aspect on it that he comments about. After he finishes, he says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. And then Jesus says, for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. How dare you get on your knees and ask God to forgive you of your sins, which is warranted of death, and you can't forgive somebody who might have bruised your sensitive feelings 10 years ago. <laughs> Matthew 18, you go to Matthew 18. Look what happens in Matthew 18. Jesus is talking about a man who, uh, a man who owed a king a million dollars. He owed this king a million dollars. And the king called him in and said, listen, uh, I need you to repay, I have a balloon payment and you need to pay me my million dollars right now. And the man said, oh, please, what, can you just wait? Can you just wait? Hold on. I'll pay. And this man made $10,000 a year. <laughs> so he had a debt he could never repay. So, so he asked, so he said, oh, King, could you just give me some more time? I, I promise I will pay, repay you this debt. Just have mercy on me. And remember in those days, if you owed a debt, you could get thrown in prison. Yeah, you and your family could get sold into slavery. So the king said, you know what? I'm feeling mighty good today. My wife just came back from out of town. And I'm feeling real good today. I'm going to forgive you of the entire debt. And the man said, what? He said, oh, thank you, king. And, and the Bible says he went out leaping and jumping. And 
the weight of the world was off of his shoulder, he could start his life all over again. Uh -uh. He could pursue his dreams. And then Jesus said that he met someone that owed him $50. And he went to the man and he said, hey man, where's my $50? I want my $50. And the man said, oh please, listen, if you could just give me a little bit more time, I promise that I'll pay you back your $50. Please have mercy on me. And the Bible says that this man put his hand around the guy's neck who owed him $50 and had him thrown in jail. And when the man who was thrown in jail, his friends heard about it, he went back to the king and, and, told, and the king told him about it. And the king called this guy in and, and you got to read this for yourself. Turn to Matthew, the 18th chapter, verses 31 and 33, because you think I'm making this up. Luke, the 18th, excuse me, Matthew, the 18th chapter, verses 31 to 33. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorrow. And they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgive thee all that debt because thou desired me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And what struck me about Jesus' words is that he said, because this man did not forgive, he was wicked. Am I in the word? He didn't say that he had desecrated the, the Sabbath. He didn't say he bowed down to graven images. He didn't say that he lied or committed adultery. He said because he didn't forgive, he was wicked. And when Jesus says you're wicked, you are in a clear and present danger. So you want your prayer lives to be sweeter? You want your prayer life to be richer? Implore these 10 biblical principles. And you'll see an immediate response in your prayer life. Thank you for tuning in to Streams of Light, the ministry of the Berean SDA Church in South Bend, Indiana. We pray that you are blessed by the program and that you'll tune in next week for another episode of Streams of Light. We'd like to encourage you to support Streams of Light TV ministry with a love gift of any amount. Donations can be sent to Berean SDA Church, 601 West Colfax Avenue, South Bend, Indiana, 46601. Please be sure to put Streams of Light in the remarks section of your check or money order. As always, we'd like to invite you out to our worship service each Saturday morning at 11 a.m. and our prayer, power, and praise service each Wednesday beginning at 645. Again, thank you for tuning in to Streams of Light. God bless and good night.